voluntary separations do not usually give you enough time to create a new version of yourself. If this period is slightly longer, then this may be the best time, a blessing in disguise, to create V2, reinvent yourself. We'll start with a talk on startups, favorite topic of today. I'll cover some mistakes I made when I was trying to reach again on my health front. I'll also talk about some work ideas which could not just keep you busy, but also enrich your life. Towards the end, we'll talk about some of the pitfalls which I've learned the hard way in my life. Hopefully, you'll be able to avoid them in your life. Remember, when you are employed, you always have a lot of startup ideas. All of them vanish if you don't have a paycheck. Why? While you are still employed, maybe spend some weekends in creating a sketch if you have a serious idea. The concept, the team you might need, the key players. Identify certain friends or people around you who might be a part of that team. How much money will be required to acquire them? How do you get that money? All those things require a plan. Where would the startup operate out of? Do you have maybe a basement? Do you have a small uh, apartment which you could use for that purpose? You need some space to operate out of. Money-wise, six months worth of expenses for trying an MVP is good enough. You don't need to have few crores in the bank to create a startup. We bootstrapped ideally. There is no point in diluting equity in the initial stage. At this stage, there is very little valuation. You have to give a lot to get very basic money also. Even after MVP, ideally sustain on debt raised from relatives and friends for some time till you can raise certain valuation. Breaks are fantastic opportunities to catch up with your health, which is mostly ignored in a modern hectic lifestyle where jobs don't give a lot of time, especially when you don't have a nine to six kind of luxury. First one is make sure you have a personal health insurance for your entire family, which will cover hospitalization. Make sure it has a meaningful amount for the hospital that you might go to in case of an illness. Better to pay the premium and start early even if your company gives a good cover. It is best to have your own policy also because a lot of exclusions, tests get involved later on and the premium also goes up. Similarly, go for term insurance for the larger earning member of the family, whichever person in the family is earning more salary. A lot of people go for insurance for everyone, both husband and wife, even kids. No, you need death cover for the dominant earning member. Include an accidental death cover also. More people die early because of accidents, not because of natural causes. Typically, a 2x death cover is useful. You might have a lot of anger or hurt inside you, which may lead to extreme sports, a lot of working out in the gym or running. Don't burn out. Don't hurt yourself. Meditation and yoga in whatever format it works for you. At home, in group, in paid classes. If you live in a gated community or if you have facilities around you, then certain sports like squash, badminton, basketball, table tennis, a lot of them can give you very good health benefits. Your body can get leaner, fitter. You can get rid of cholesterol, sugar. It is fantastic to start your walking or running journey at this time. It does not need anything besides a good pair of shoe and a reasonable place to walk, which could be inside your society, on the roads. Keep yourself safe. Make sure you start small if you are not a habitual runner. Start with just whatever, half kilometer, one kilometer kind of walks. Graduate to 5K, then run 5K, 10K, half marathon. Full marathon, if you are post 40 is hard. A lot of people have done it. I have run a half marathon at 41. Do it only if your health allows. Otherwise, you may end up with a serious injury. Make sure that as per your age, you are avoiding injuries to your ankle, especially in badminton and squash and your ligaments if you run long distances suddenly. Basic gear, the shoe appropriate to the sport you are trying, right clothes which are required. Make sure you get them. You don't need fancy brands. You don't need a lot of quantity. One or two pairs is good enough. There are a lot of options available today in India for spiritual tourism. It is purely around meditative state of your mind to calm your nerves, especially if you are going through what today is called mental wellness. There may be a week to week kind of packages. You might have time on hand. There'll be money involved. But this is perhaps the best time to invest in your health right now. You could volunteer for certain organizations. It is very good for your soul and it is very good for the society. Take online classes for maybe your own college for the students who are in current batches. You could create some content online 
for the community to learn if you have some hard skill where you are really confident and good. If any of your friends is running a startup, maybe join them, contribute to their success, not necessarily to charge them if they are in a bootstrap mode. It leads to healthy relationships with your friends and you will definitely acquire certain new skills because in startup mode, the learning is really, really expedited. You could try an advisory or a consultant position which does not require 8-9 hours every day or every day to be spent on it. It could add a lot of value to someone else. They could give you certain money which is reasonable for you from cash flow perspective, not equivalent to your salary. There may be some stock options involved. You might get a bit of their equity. Who knows in the long run, you, that may become very big. You could start blogging, vlogging, express yourself, get whatever in your head out, in your heart out, write good blogs, improve your speaking skills, improving your communication skills, your ability to create PowerPoints, videos. Avoid any expenses on EMIs. If you are not in a paycheck mode, then EMIs coming in every month without spending hurt a lot. Discretionary upgrades like laptops, phones, televisions, all these if you can hold on for a few months till you are in control of the situation, it will be great. If you need them to upgrade your skills or something, then yes, please go ahead and buy them, but not on EMI possibly. At this stage, don't park money into long-term retirement instruments like PPF, discretionary ones. You are not retiring right now. This is the time to be having money in your hand as much as possible and being on liquidity. Don't prepay your home loans. This may sound a bit controversial because this is supposed to reduce your expenses, which is the objective, but Home loans are the cheapest form of raising money for an individual like you and me. And it is very difficult to get a new loan if you don't have a paycheck. Save the eligibility. Getting rid of 10, 20 lakh right now to save 10, 20 thousand may not be the best idea. At this juncture when paycheck is not coming, most people tend to upskill, cross-skill and an expensive MBA or course may sound like a great idea that it may open some new doors. Yes, it can be done. But do evaluate the feedback of that course. Most of the courses available today, the real expensive ones, especially the foreign ones, may add a little value, but not necessarily get you a job. It can add to your candidature, but it cannot be a standalone thing which will give you the extra lever. There is a lot of knowledge available besides those expensive courses also. If the goal is to increase your knowledge, Udemy is there, YouTube is there, short-term nugget courses are there. One small tip, if you use YouTube for increasing your knowledge, take the premium version of YouTube, it will save a lot of time by not watching the ads. Don't take money from your parents and in-laws at this stage. All of them will be considerate. They'll try to gift in some manner. Don't take it. Reserve the money for a further down the time stage where it may be more important to get the money from them. Let me end this series with two set of inputs in about a minute's time, which may be very useful for you because these are based upon my two and a half decades in the industry. Social media. Don't ever went out on social media in case of a separation about a person, about a company, direct, indirect. Never burn the bridges. The word is too small. No unusual post, cryptic posts, no status updates, which reflect about your inner state, which is temporary. The side effect of those updates will be permanent. In my opinion, avoid I am available for work right on the first day if you end up in a separation case. Give yourself time, look for a job outside. I have usually seen it is not perceived very well by the community. Next category, socializing. Don't get into your shelf and stop socializing. Be in BAU mode with your friends and family. Totally, totally avoid negative conversations about what the company did, what the manager did, how unreasonable they were. Completely zero. Be positive in your own frame of mind while you talk to people. Do not flood job sites, including LinkedIn with your profile, applying for every job available where you could apply. For the simple reason, you want to try out some places and see what you need to learn more, maybe brush a few things, update your profile and then go forward. Lot of companies block you for six months to one year if you fail an interview. Don't want to do that by being underprepared. There may be friends that you reach out for help, please send my profile to your company and they may not be able to help or get you an interview call. Don't judge them. It's not a word where people even at a higher position can influence a role that you can fill in. Last, if you are not able to handle things, if you're not in control of your mental health, please talk to an expert. It is not a taboo any longer these days to talk about mental health, any issues with it. If you go early enough, no medical help may be required, just counseling may be good enough. 